What is good guys and welcome to today's video. I am so excited so excited for two reasons. First of all, we're gonna be working on the Miata today. Starting to piece together the engine bay, you can't see much, the hood's been sitting on it uh, just to try and keep some water out of it because it's been kind of raining on and off today. The second reason why I'm possibly even more excited than working on the Miata, if I was to be honest, is because I got new kicks. Check these boys out guys, we're gonna some more Michael Jordans. I'm pretty pumped, they're sick, they're awesome. And uh, for the memes, you guys know what that means. Now we're gonna go jump in the car with Chris, other Chris, bigger Chris, I don't know what his name, what is your surname? I need to know. Oh, it's medium Chris. I just call you Emo Chris from now on. Medium sized medium -sized Chris? Okay, we're jumping in the car, we're gonna get some chicken and rice and then we're gonna work on the Miata, let's go. I was not joking guys, literally chicken and rice. I'm gonna chow down on this and then let's get stuck into the Miata. So after a decent feed, it is now time to start piecing this thing back together. I'm gonna start off by just untaping all the looms because I just taped them up with some electrical tape to make it easier while they're painting to keep everything in one line. Um, we'll put all the brake lines and stuff back where they were, the clutch lines, just bolt everything back in where it should be, fuse boxes and stuff. I'm gonna try and clean up this bottom subframe, scuff it up a bit and hit it with a can of black spray paint just to try and make that look a bit, bit, a bit better because it's the only thing that stands out right now that's kind of gross. Um, and we might as well do it because it'll only take me five minutes. But otherwise, that's where we're at. I kind of like, I hate that there's a bit of red overspray on here. Um, so we'll see what we can do over that. Maybe I can just rewrap the whole loom in some electrical tape or something. We'll work it out as we go along. Put the wipers back on, booster back in, all the stuff like hinges that I got the new paint extra that are sitting there. Just pretty much my goal is to try and get everything in the bay um, that I can to the point of, you know, it's just ready to accept an engine. Just bam, straight in there. So let's get to it. So a bit of an update, I've been chipping away at everything and a couple hours have gone past. It's very time consuming, just taking my time, making sure I'm not chipping the paint and going through and working out where all the wiring looms go, where all the clips and the clamps and the bolts go and just slowly working my way through, um, as well as any brackets and stuff I pull out of the box from when I disassembled everything that has red overspray on it, I'm hitting it with some paint, um, you know, putting it in that box there and then just spraying it. Um, so taking my time with everything, I also did uh, hit the subframe down there with some paint as well, so that looks much nicer. Um, but yeah, just, it's so tedious. <laughs> But it's all good, we're, we're chipping away at everything and getting through it piece by piece. I also cleaned all the bolts and stuff. These here, I'm gonna probably paint black before we put them on or find a way to strip all that paint off, maybe soak them in brake cleaner or something. But the majority of the bolts, I actually soaked in the aluminium purple, uh, aluminium cleaner and purple power, and it stripped off all the rust and any decoloration on them and made them look really nice and clean. If you can see that, it's hard to see, but they're nice and clean. Just the ones that have the red paint on them and stuff, uh, gonna have to need touching up but uh, yeah I definitely don't want these big bolts here I know these are used for the headlights so I'll get those painted black or something so it matches but otherwise it's just a puzzle piece and it's pretty um, pretty hard to film uh, without doing time lapses all the time and I'd rather just kind of flick my fingers and everything be done but it's not one of those things so I'm gonna keep chipping away and hopefully we get this done by the end of the night get the headlights in um, we can start working on putting fenders on and bumper on if we need to, um, but we can wait on that as well, just as long as I get uh, um, majority of all this stuff done. Also, if anyone knows in the comment section, the company that makes those things that cover up here, like new ones, I want to get a nice black one. Um, if anyone knows any information about that, please uh, put it in the comment section with a link or just tell me the company name and I'll look it up because I want to get one piece that covers all of that perfectly and brand new. I don't want to buy OEM if I can because I think it'll look sick. Anyway, so that, back to uh, putting together this puzzle piece. So let me show you my biggest problem with this whole entire reassembling everything. And that is this, right? I go and pull parts out of the box to put back in to only find there's red overspray or red paint on them. And like, I've already had the lights in here and I just hated how you could see the frames and everything for the lights that went onto this and they weren't black, they were red and it looked gross. So. I covered them all up with shop towels and painted them black. 
and then any other little brackets and bolts and things that were red, I've painted black, and then you gotta wait for the paint to dry, <laughs> to then put it all back together, to then only have to go back to this box here, to then find something else that has red overspray on it that needs painting for me to then paint and put in. And it's just this huge process. And then whenever I pull another part out, I then have to go and look at this thing to figure out where it goes. But then the frustrating thing about this thing is obviously it's right hand drive, so things don't always make sense. And the only the other Miata that's an NA Miata with a 1.8 engine is Chris's and he just took that home a while ago so it's like 12.30 it's past midnight and I'm still trying to put together my engine bay and this is what drives me insane look at this overspray I'm almost like I'm I'm literally thinking about just quickly just hitting it with black paint like <laughs> I know that's not the right way to deal with it, but that, that's just like in my head, I'm like, that would be so much quicker and easier to just hit it with the spray paint. <laughs> We're not gonna do that. I'm actually probably going to uh, peel it all off with a razor blade later and re-tape it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. This side's not so bad and anything like this stuff here that's a little bit red, that's under the headlight, so you won't see that, that's fine. I just want everything in the bay to match and look good. Um, I'm definitely figuring out that if I ever do another giveaway like this, another car giveaway, which I will be, I definitely will be doing car giveaways, is if I'm building the car, I'm probably gonna end up like acid dipping the entire shell and starting from scratch <laughs> because I'm just so OCD with this stuff. It's kind of insane. Making sure we don't leave sockets anywhere. But yeah, so progress. I know it's not like a super crazy entertaining video and I'm literally waiting for paint to dry right now and I don't wanna film that. Um, but I know the boys are having some fun over at HP Logic. So let's go see what's up there. So Marcus has been working on this 240, which has been completely like rust repaired and the whole bottom of it was bedlined it looks amazing every suspension component on here is pretty much being changed mm -hmm. and it's all adjustable which is super sick and what you just mount a test block in here to see how everything goes yeah yeah so we have a spare block just laying around so i'm just testing it to see where everything's going to sit it looks like i have plenty of clearance to put the covering and the head on yeah and then the main thing is the thing that's sitting on the ground right there I know that kind of Wait. Oh, okay. I was like, hang on, that's a GTR transmission. Um, how are you making this all wheel drive? But then I saw that they cut it off. They cut it off and weld it up. Yeah. That's actually a super common thing. A lot of guys that like do um, GTR conversions into BMWs, like E30s, yep. they'll chop that or any rear wheel drive conversion. Yeah. So they'll chop that out. We did that. And then today I mounted the steering, painted yep. everything. Uh, the gas pedal's in, the oh, wow, brake, they the clutch. Bedlined everything in the car, even oh, yeah. the interior. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Because this thing literally came, like, it arrived, like, on a pallet. Completely yeah, bare. That pallet, right? Yeah. There. Yeah. It, the main thing is that he got it, and it was a complete car, too. Ran and drove. Oh. So then he just the stripped car. the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you could still see a tad bit of the rust that, that the painter's going to fix. It's over there. Okay. Oh yeah, there's a little bit there. But, but yeah. this is insane. It makes putting stuff inside a little hard though. Yeah, I bet. So what I had to do is I had to like scrape off some of the stuff so I yeah. fit things on there properly because I want like a good seal. I don't want things to be all cocked. Yeah, I imagine like all the bolt holes need to be like re-tapped out and stuff. He was very smart and he put stuff in them. Oh really? Yeah. That's good. A lot of body guys don't care about it. They're like someone else's problem and they just spay over it. That's cool. Oh, this is cool. These are very important on these cars. They yep. take out all the steering slops. Yep. Super important. Full steering, everything's in. Just Hell yeah. Turn. He's got the super thick upgraded. Yeah, I uh, saw that. Tie rods. Do you know what his plans are for this car? Like what, what RB is going in it? It's an RB26. It's a uh, fully built, uh, forged internals, mainly rods and pistons and stuff like that. Might not be the, the rods, but definitely the pistons and then uh, fully built head, single turbo. Nice. Uh, I think he's doing an intake plenum, but I'm not sure. Yeah. But it's definitely gonna be a really cool build to see. I mean, this just looks cool as it is now, honestly, yeah. especially with all these parts like that. I love these things so much. Yeah, so I'm trying to flop between a couple cars in the shop, and this Jeez. one is getting the attention for probably the next, until- Looks so good. Tomorrow, Friday here? Yeah, I don't even know. Tomorrow's Friday. is it? Yeah, it is Friday tomorrow. Jeez. Yeah. So I'll you do one more day on this. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take basically find out where the heck the 
the harness goes. Mm. Pull the harness through, put the harness inside to where it's gonna kind of lay out. Mm. And then I will uh, call it. I mean, I this would have been rolling if I had all the parts. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing, like when customers bring you like a bear car like this, you gotta try and piece it all back together when you didn't even take it apart. And I've gone to the hardware store like four times. Yeah, yeah, well that's the thing, no bagging and tagging, right? He did, he did, the guys that took it apart for him did not. And they oh. took a lot of it away. Oh, bummer. So, but he did a lot of research, like he found these OEM steering rack mounts, mm. brand new. Jeez. This steering rack is a brand new, never been used, not remanned, nothing rack for a Datsun 240Z. I didn't Found even know these new. things even existed, that you could get that stuff new. You have to look. He said yeah. he has hours. These mounts are cool. Yep. I actually didn't think it was gonna fit this morning, but this one, this one sides slides forward and backwards, yep. while that one just goes up and down. Yep. So I was like, wow, this thing is not gonna sit in here right. So we just kind of lifted it up and yep. kind of slid it in the spot and it kind of fell in there. So. Yeah, this is cool. This is gonna be so cool, like to see like its progression over the next like, like month or so probably. Yeah. But yeah, that's gonna be a very cool build. Especially like a lot of guys do RV swaps into these and shoot for like 500 horsepower, but never upgrade everything. Like we'll quickly send this up on the hoist and we'll show you what's in the rear end. Cause yeah. it's very cool. So we got the car in the air and this is what we're talking about. This is an R200 diff in this Datsun 240Z. It is, it's very, very cool. Yeah. These came, the R200 diffs came in Skylines and Sylvia's and stuff. This looks like a Sylvia variant because of the six bolt here. Um, but yeah, like this adapter kit is super cool. It's all billet. If you look here, look yeah. at how good that looks. It's all from Techno Toy Tuning. So the rear mustaches, the drop brackets are, we're getting the, the they, they literally call them fancy drop bracket bolts or mounts. <laughs> okay. And uh, we're getting those. We're going to be getting the uh, the bushings that go in the diff. Yep. Um, and then a couple more pieces for the front. But I have over here in this box right here, this is, I have to put them together, but this what? is the front brake setup. That's cool. So like, what would that be like? Three piece brakes? <laughs> yeah. So. Because you still got, you still got like uh, the rotor will be one piece, and then there'll be the center, and then that bolts to the center. Yep. That's gonna be super cool. Hell yeah, I'm pumped. And then these are all the rear knuckles and lower control arms yep. and stuff. Rear lower control arms. Those are the PC axles. axles for it. He Jeez, had yeah. All oh, right, that's very cool. They actually send you in this kit. They actually send you like the axles that you need for the car. Oh, and then you just I guess send them to a yeah, an axle just, shop and they mich they put it in. Yeah, they get everything else for you. So. That's very cool. I've never seen like any of this kind of conversion stuff up close like this. So being able to see this build happen here is very, very cool. Yeah. There you guys go, HP Logic, rebuild cars now. <laughs> I think you guys have always done that, but just being able to see it in person is super sick. Yeah. Very cool, you're doing a great job. So another update for you guys, as you can see, we got the light sitting in there now, and I even started taping, re-taping up the loom there to get rid of all the red overspray that was on that wiring loom. So things are starting to come together pretty nice, um, but it is now like 2.30 in the morning and I've literally been burning the midnight oil. I'm exhausted and I'm kind of just over how slow the progress is on this, but obviously like there's a lot that's happened. It's just, you can't really like, see a big improvement. The only thing that you can really probably tell right now is that this headlights are in. Um, I was really hoping to get like fenders and bumpers and stuff on today, but like just all these little finicky things and, and stuff like that, that I just wanted to make sure like the, the brackets that go into the headlight, painting those black and then all the little, you know, other little brackets and things like that that needed painting black that was still red or had overspray on it. Like even these rubber, uh, like stoppers for the hood. All, all four of these, I had to clean red overspray off from the previous paint job. Like you can even see on this bumper part here, there's still some overspray there. And then, now luckily that's inside the bumper, so I don't care about that and I know we won't see it, but just everything else, like all these little brackets, like even this fuse box, look at this. There's red overspray on that. And that's driving me insane. So that's why like I'm just going through and cleaning it off everything or respraying things when we can. So, this is where we're going to leave it today. I'm going to put the hood on, push it outside and park it. Um, but for now, like we did get a lot hooked up in here and it's insane how quickly and fast it is to pull everything apart to then when you got to put it all back together and try to remember where it all goes like a jigsaw puzzle and then realize 
damn, this takes a lot longer than it does disassembling. And I think that's always the case though. Whenever you disassemble stuff, you can get it done way faster than it does to assemble. So you gotta triple check everything and redo a bunch of stuff. So that's where we're at. I hope you guys are pumped. Don't forget to get your Miata giveaway entries. Head to semit.net forward slash shop and go grab yourself as much merch as you can. Every 500 yen you spend is one entry. So don't miss out. Um, any and all information is on semit.net. You can find all that info there. So make sure you go check it out. Um, otherwise, progress is progress. It's all coming together. Doesn't matter that we're taking our time because at the end of the day, we're still waiting for the engine to be ready for us to assemble on the weekend. And then from there, then we're gonna be able to start sitting things in there. And well, once the engine's assembled, there's a whole bunch of other stuff we have to do to the engine to then get it ready to drop it in. Like, you know, clutch and any other seals and gaskets and stuff like that. Like just assembling the bottom end, bolting the head on doesn't mean that it's ready to drop in. We've got a lot more stuff to do. So taking my time on this, triple checking everything. Um, on that note, um, as you guys know in previous videos, I was saying that Chris needs to get that oil pump, that boundary oil pump for his Miata Forge build because there's just no point spending all that money doing a Forge build if you're not gonna do the oil pump as well. And we all know he's gonna try and push for crazy power. Um, but proud to say we finally convinced him. So thank you very much guys for all that help and spamming him and telling him to do the same thing. Um, this blueberry is very, very cool. I need to get Chris to let me drive this. Uh, I think we'll do a couple videos on maybe his Evo and Blueberry when I finally am able to leave the USA and head back to Japan. So I'll like, you know, have these videos filmed in one day and two separate videos of reviews of both of these cars and I'll be able to then, you know, fly back and not have to worry about uploading while I'm sitting on a flight wishing I was dead. Um, <laughs> anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know it wasn't like super crazy, epic, hype, rotary, crazy drifting, burnouts or anything like that. Um, it's all part of the build, slow progress, and just taking our time, making sure everything is done right. And that's what's important because I would not be able to live with myself if the car we gave away was just slapped together and I didn't take my time on it and make sure everything was perfect. So I hope you guys appreciate that. Smash the like button, leave a comment, and I'll catch you all in tomorrow's video. Get your entries, semi-donut forward slash shop, buy as much merch as you can. Peace out. Jamaat.